man, I'm tired of this map crap. Can't get the map to zoom how I want. Coordinates are all messed up. Ugh, I need some help. Does this look like you? Let me tell you, my friend, I'm here to help. We're going to go over bounding boxes. Bounding boxes. What a great thing. So let's get into it. All right, everyone, it's Victor here. We're getting into bounding boxes. You might not know what that is even talking about, but let me tell you, bounding boxes, so great. They're gonna help you make your map way more usable. So we're gonna use turf. We're gonna throw together a couple things. We're actually doing a two for today. We're gonna do B-Box, turf.bbox, and turf.bbox polygon. Oh yeah, so let's go. So uh, we get started. We're ripping up the map. We go to our typical example from uh, Map Libra. We throw a map into some code. Here we go. Get this loaded in. We get turf loaded in by going to the getting started section and grabbing this bit of script right there. And we're off and running. So what the heck is a bounding box? And why the heck should we care? Well, a bounding box is basically a rectangle that's going to encompass all the features that you're showing on your map or that you want the user to zoom to or see on the map at the same time. So this is actually really useful because if your map's changing at all, if the data changes, if the user can select different things or filter things and you want the map to zoom in and out and change based on that, you need to use bounding boxes. And in general, a bounding box is going to be way better than just using like a zoom and center coordinate because it's gonna match what the user can actually see. So if a user is on a desktop that's wide, it'll fit the map. And if the user's on a mobile, which is narrow, it'll also fit the map. So it's way, way better to use a bounding box to get all those features visible rather than just setting a zoom and a center. So be good. So bounding boxes are basically a collection of coordinates that define this rectangle. And you don't really have to know the details, but if you think about it, the rectangle is really defined by having two points that kind of make it a box. So they kind of give you the length of the top and the height of the side. It's a little complicated. If we go to like a definition here on the OpenStreetMaps page, again, it says area defined by two latitudes and two longitudes. And basically it gives you a one point and another point and from that it can make a box and then from there you can basically zoom your map. And the ability to zoom in fit to bounding boxes is built into every mapping API that you're gonna run into, every mapping library is gonna have that. So you just gotta find the bounding box, make sure it's formatted right, and then give it to the mapping library. So um, usually they come in a set of four like numbers. So we have an example here where we have an example of four numbers. So this is giving the south latitude, the north latitude, the west longitude, and the east longitude. Not the most intuitive of formats, and it doesn't always come out the exact same way. You're gonna run into bounding boxes that are slightly different. So anyway, Turf has this awesome method that's just called B-Box right up here, and it's just gonna take any GeoJSON you give it, and it's gonna return a bounding box in this min x, min y, max x, max y order, which is actually a different order. That's saying um, if x is our longitude, that's saying like minimum longitude, minimum latitude. So you don't have to know the details, but you have to know that the formats can change around a bit. So you're not always dealing with exactly the same. So let's make a bounding box. So I'm gonna first go to geojson.io, throw together a little tiny random data set just to get us rolling on this. So all I did was planted a little marker here in Vancouver, drew a line. I'm going on a driving trip tomorrow. To, so this is roughly where I'm going to drive. So if I want my map to actually zip and zoom to this, we're going to uh, load up our stuff here. We have our basic stuff loaded up. And I put a different style than the default map Libra style just because I want to be able to see um, some of the streets and stuff once we load it on. I've copy pasted this feature collection from geojson.io into my code. So I have my line and my point. And then I just call turf bbox and pass it that feature collection. So then we're gonna console log what that bounding box looks like and also the bounds that the map, like, cause I can get the bounding box of the current map and also uh, look at how they might be different. 
And then we're going to run a little function on map Libra map that will fit the map to the bounds of the bounding box. First, we're not going to do that. And we're just going to see what happens here. So we load it up. Our map just loads in at whatever starter coordinates we gave. We zoom in. There's nothing here. Okay, cool. But we are console logging some stuff. So let's take a look. So this is what turf gave me. You can see there's like a longitude, a latitude, a longitude, a latitude. And when I actually console log bounds from um, within the map Libra library, you can see it gives me back a set as two points, a northeast point and a southwest point. This is generally how bounds are thought about, northeast and southwest. Um, and it gives me those points. Uh, you know, they're kind of wacky because I'm way zoomed out at a zero, zero. But you, 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 you get the point. So uh, let's go back to our code here and let's actually make our bounding box and fit the map to our bounding box. So if we load that, boom, now we're loaded right to where you would see that point and the line. And you can see I actually did a couple extra cool things. I added some padding, which means I have some space around the bounding box and I changed the duration. These are just methods particular to map Libra, not necessarily in every library, uh, but every library pretty much will have a fit bounds. But I know in Google Maps, for instance, it is a different format. You have to tell it specifically latitude and longitude, I think. So, okay, that's bounding box, done. Like, no big problem. So let's actually look at it. And with this, we can make the bounding box polygon because the bounding box is just two coordinates. So you can't actually like put that on a map or use it for anything other than just doing this bounding box stuff, maybe sending to an API if it requires it. So if we now load this up, we actually have this polygon here. So that's actually the bounding box. You can see the padding around the side from that method. So that's cool. And then you can see that that's what you will actually be zooming to. So that's awesome. Now, the cool thing about bounding box polygon is that we take this bounding box that we've made from whatever is visible on the map, and now we can like make other stuff with it. So we can use other turf methods on it. And at first, this is kind of like, this is getting to advanced level, but one of my goals with this whole thing is to introduce you to like turf methods, but also kind of show you how they can be used with other turf methods, because spatial analysis is really useful in a chain kind of set like that. So for instance, I could buffer this. So buffer is a thing in turf where you can basically make a feature larger by giving it, uh, you give the original feature and then you give a radius around it. And this might be useful for if I wanted to, again, if I didn't have a method like with the padding, um, I have that already built in, but if I didn't have that, then I could buffer my bounding box and give that as, a, and then make a new bounding box from the old one and give that to the fit bounds call so that it would then fit properly. So we're gonna just do that real quickly. I create a buffered bounding box, passing in my bounding box polygon and 100 kilometers as my buffer size. And then I add that shape uh, so we can see it on top. And then I'm gonna refit the map to the new bounding box that I made. So again, we're just chaining together methods. This isn't super important, but you can see, oh, boom, I made a bigger shape. It's also got this radius because it's, it's buffering in a kind of radius way. And Cool, we just could use the polygon to do some more stuff. Okay, that's something, might not seem super useful, but could be cool. Uh, something that's really cool is hex grids. So these are really useful for some types of maps where maybe you're showing some like data in a kind of heat map style, showing data in different quadrants of the map. So we can use the bounding box itself. We actually don't have to use the bounding box polygon. Hex grid, a turf method, comes from using just using the bounding box and a diameter that we pass in and we're going to load that on the map and take a look at what it looks like. So we load that, we see there's these different hexes. So let's say I was showing, I don't know, like number of trees in each hex. I could do the calculations um, by using all different turf methods like points in polygon, how many points intersect with different stuff and then color each of these individual grids differently. And I made it all just in what the user's looking at. I don't need to make it um, from, you know, the whole world at the same time. We can also change the number there. So look at all these different hexes. So you can imagine this could make a really useful um, data display mechanism. We can also use stuff like points within polygon. When we have the bounding box polygon, we can also use Boolean intersects to check if something is going, if a line intersects with the user's bounds now. And again, in the abstract, these are a little complicated to understand. But you can imagine, for instance, even if I'm doing uh, this kind of highway thing, and if I zoom the user and find out, oh, 
hey, this highway intersects with the user, what the user can currently see on their map. Oh, I can show some information about that highway. I can show some information about points that are currently showing to them on the map. There's all kinds of things creatively you can do knowing the bounding box. So it's great for zooming. It's also great for spatial analysis. So keep this one in your back pocket, bounding box, B box. That's what we're all about. And that's our lesson for today. See you next time.